hi welcome to my channel welcome back if you've been here before i'm peace and today's video is all about how to stand out in a saturated industry i'm going to be focusing more on hair because that's what i'm in but this can apply to anything that is saturated which is pretty much everything now before we start please hit the subscribe button you will be getting a lot of gems in this video and you'll also be getting gems every sunday from me and I will just be telling you everything I wish I knew and everything I've had to learn the extremely, extremely long way. So yeah, I just feel like now more than ever, this is so important to find ways to position yourself as a unique player in whatever industry you're in. And I think especially in the beauty space, this is really prevalent, like lashes, hair, clothing, um, makeup, <laughs> it's kind of what makes you different from the next. So that's what we're gonna be getting into today. So my first tip is all about branding, 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 branding. I think when I was going to start this channel, I actually did a poll as to whether I should make my last video my first video or branding. And I'm going to do branding in a separate video. Um, and it was almost 50-50, to be honest, because it is so important. It is so important to kind of to have a strong brand. And when I say branding, it's not necessarily just the way it looks what defines a brand is what people know you for like how do people feel when they see your page how do people feel when they interact with your company branding is what creates longevity for businesses and there's a concept called customer lifetime value and this is something you always want to increase and this means how much is the customer gonna spend with you so what is the customer's value in a sense over a lifetime essentially so customer lifetime value one of the key ways you can create this is by having a strong brand because that's what creates customer loyalty that's what makes customers keep coming back because they they will get to trust you when there's so many different people selling the same thing people don't want to be going to different places all the time they want to know that you are the person that can give them what they want to feel and what they want to buy and having a brand is what will create that in the long term i'll just give you a few pointers of some of the key things in branding um the key things to hone in on would be your brand values, like what does your company believe in, what are you trying to promote? And again, this will tie into what people know you for. What is a brand promise? So what is it that everyone knows that they can get when they shop with you? Is it that you're going to have the best quality hair? Is it that they're going to have the best customer experience? Is it that they're going to have one day shipping? Is it that they're going to have 24 hour response time? Like you need to have something that you can always promise to your customers that they're going to have when they shop with you. So your brand's voice, which is like your tone of voice, what kind of personality do you want to have when you communicate with your customers? Like if you see the way McDonald's write in their communications or their emails, their marketing materials, their social media, it'll be very different to it'll be very different to how um Gucci writes, for example. So you're gonna to need to come up with some sort of tone of voice that customers will get a certain feeling when they're reading your the words that are written by your your company. Visual branding is of course really important, but visual branding will be the representation of all those points I just addressed. Yeah, your visual should be tied to your brand promise, your brand values, your brand tone of voice, and all these other things that are so important when it comes to branding. And this is why it's so, so important to understand your target customer and like your customer persona. If you don't know what customer persona is, then I'll suggest you yeah, just Google it. Yeah, there'll be some sort of workbook for you to get to understand your ideal customer. And yeah, this is a really good thing to keep in mind when you're creating like your visual identity. And even some of your branding can come from what you believe the target customer needs. And it can also come from whatever is your personal story and your personal reason for having this business. So yeah, it's really important to keep all those things in mind. But, yeah, my second tip is to have a unique selling proposition. And this is a USP because you wanna have something that is just not done in the market. Your USP doesn't have to be anything like crazy. It can just be a small amendment. Like when you're in the manufacturing process, speaking to suppliers, don't be afraid to ask for like minor amendments. If someone has made something, then the chances are they can make it in a different shape. Chances are they can make it in a different color. Chances are they can make it in a different material. Like these things, do not be afraid. Do not feel like you have to just take whatever they have in stock and put your branding on it. Like if you know there's a, a need in the market, there's a hole in the market for a, an amendment to a popular product, then why not be the one to do that extra bit of work and get in that manufactured? So for example, if you're in the hair industry, as you know, people do not play when it comes to their hair so maybe your usp can be that 
you're, you're going to provide bundles with like extra strong wefts so that shedding is reduced and the longevity of the hair is increased now, i don't i've not seen anyone do that like everyone says that their hair is last long but if you actually had something solid to say that this is what you've made sure with your products that you have and you're delivering then I, that's going to be such a key thing to make you stand out in the market and it will allow you to have something to um send to your marketing materials around which is going to be so so helpful for you it's going to get so much easier because you're going to find when you're promoting these things you're going to be like i'm always saying the same thing like if you don't have something unique and something really solid that your brand can give customers in particular you're going to find yourself just feeling that you're just writing really wishy-washy captions really wishy-washy adverts and this will just give you something really solid to just be like this is what we do this is what we do and no one else is doing it do you know what i mean so yeah having a usp doesn't even have to be like a custom made thing like i said girls do not play when it comes to their hair so you could be the person that's just like and they don't play with, i say they like i'm not a girl we don't play when it comes to our hair but for some reason everyone wants to leave it to the last minute to get their hair before their appointment i'm just like oh, it's not adding up but anyway you can be the person who offers one day shipping so you can be like you'll just be that go-to person that is really reliable where you offer one day shipping and that's your usp for example that could be such a a powerful thing that you are the go-to fast hair provider if you if you get what i mean so you could still be selling the same bundle the same type of styles as everyone else straight body wave whatever but you're that go-to fast person and not many people are offering a service like that yeah i'm telling you having a usp will just give you something so solid to talk about and it will just make things so much easier for you and give your brand that je ne sais quoi you know and then my final tip is niching down which i think some people are scared to do because you think you're limiting yourself but let me tell you this world is huge there's going to be a substantial audience a substantial audience even for your niche product so for example as you may or may not know my hair brand we specialize in crochet hair this will expand but this is how i started and this is how i established myself and there wasn't enough there wasn't a lot of good crochet hair and this is how i niched down and was able to build a customer base that trusts me for that kind of hair and knows that this is what I specialise in and then in the future when I kind of start to branch out they already have I already have that trust I already have that customer base I already have that direct relationship with my customers and it makes it so much easier to expand so yeah niching down just allows you to build momentum in a subcategory and then you're able to like build out as you have that trust and loyalty and experience even it's something if you're trying to be a jack of all trades, you already have to be a jack of all trades as a business owner. Then to make your business a jack of all trades as well, that means you're going to have to be a jack of all trades of different types of products, different types of industries in some cases. I've seen people selling makeup, clothes, bags, everything on the same site. And it's just like, st establish yourself in one lane first. It will probably make things a lot easier when you're starting out anyway. Um, just this, these are all things to make building momentum easier at the end of the day as i am a thorough believer in everything is possible and the world is abundant and there is a lot of opportunity so even if you decided to not do any of these things and go out and sell the same things as what everyone else is selling you will get sales but i'm this will speed up your momentum that's facts so niching down it doesn't even have to be that stringent like you can really layer these things you can be the provider of a certain type of hair maybe you're going to specialize in sleek straight bundles and you can be the sleek straight bundle provider of your city because you've niched down for sleek bundles you can also layer this with the usp of offering same day shipping for your geographical area obviously these are just examples and this might not suit your lifestyle but you can make these things work but just kind of think outside the box how can you just establish yourself in like a smaller sense before you start expanding out because it will really the thing is with business all you want to do is build momentum build trust because then you want, you're going to get reviews you're going to get which are what we call social proof and this is so so important for like marketing for building further trust with new customers and you you need that momentum to help you get capital that's that's what it comes down to business at the end of the day is an elaborate profit and loss account all right so getting that initial momentum is going to what is going to be what allows you to expand and fulfill those like bigger 
global dreams do you know what i mean so yeah just like i would say really don't do not be afraid to niche down don't think you're limiting yourself building momentum in an ocean which is what the world is in a lot of these industries building momentum in the hair industry this is a something billion industry for a reason and there is a lot of people trying to do the same thing so building momentum on that scale versus build momentum in a a river it's still big these things are still big i said be, imagine being the sole provider of sleek bundles in my city so my city london do you know how many women are in london so imagine you're selling your bundles for 200 pounds 10 people a week buy from you that is two thousand you're making a week like can you imagine that that in your kind of early days just because you've narrowed down as being the sleep bundle provider in london where you can get same day shipping like that's still a lot of money and that two thousand you can then reinvest to maybe having a even different quality of sleep bundle so you can get sleep bundles that are great but then you can have raw indian bundles as well like you can you can you can use that initial capital you've got from being the specialist in one area and start to reinvest that and then starting to slowly expand i'm telling you this will make your life a lot easier but at the end of the day this is your business so do whatever you feel but this is what's really worked for me i feel like this is what would help a lot of people that feel like they've been trying to get they've been trying to build sales in a certain industry and it's just like oh there's so many people doing the same thing so many, just the answer is don't do the same thing as everyone else and yeah then you have something to really solidify your brand on so so yeah thank you so much for watching honestly i really really appreciate it i pray you find this helpful i pray over your businesses and i pray they're fruitful and abundant and god is able to do so much more than you could ever imagine um don't forget to like comment and all that youtube stuff and yeah see you next time bye